Ah, the good old Nintendo Entertainment System, aka the NES. I can't believe it, but it was released way back in 1985. And it's been said that the NES helped revitalise the US video game industry following the video game crash of 1983. Some rate it as the single greatest console of all time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Love it or hate it or love to hate it, I've been on another journey. And in that intergalactic journey of infiltrating complex enemy bases, whilst wandering around maze-like levels, killing lots of people, I had a top 10 NES epiphany. Just know, I do these videos with love. It's a little bit of downtime, isn't it? I don't know. So then, long before the Super Nintendo was a twinkle in Nintendo's eye, the NES was better than life. Can't be bad, can it? Well, some of it is, some of it isn't. Number 10, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, released 1987. You play Little Mac from the Bronx. And this guy is one tough cookie. Mike Tyson, a hero of many, is waiting in the shadows in the penultimate final. But until the showdown, you've got to fight your way through 14 bouts. The ultimate spectacle in pugilism on the NES. Remember kids, if you die, you die. Destroy the mother brain, kill all the pirates, and be home in time for lunch. So you must guide Ripley, I, I, I mean Samus. What? It's true. Sharp. Two of the bosses are named after Ridley Scott for Christ's sake. Anyway, it makes the list because the fifth and final ending shows Samus without the armour and dressed in nothing but a skimpy bikini. If you laughed at that, you're a pervert. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, you'll need real staying power to get anywhere in this game. It's a classic through and through. Highly recommended. In one of the darkest times for Great Britain, a young prince and a princess. Oops, sorry. I'm thinking of the wrong kingdom. I meant Hyrule. Damn me to hell. Anyway, like that lot, you're a pointy-eared freak. Everybody knows you as Link, and you've got to rescue the Princess Zelda. It's so good that Nintendo released this in a shiny, gold-coloured plated cartridge. It's also a game that keeps giving. If you complete the first quest, you get the option to play the second quest, which is much harder. Why has he put Kirby at number seven? All right, all right, let me explain. I'm prejudiced against people with pointy ears. Good old Kirby was late to the party, 1993. But when it comes to platforming, you can't keep a big, massive giant of a pink puffball down. <gasps> That's bloody charming, that is. The look and feel and the colour used in this game is a proper, a real labour of love. It's a shame, then, that the last level is finished in black and white. Back in the day, this was easily one of the greatest games of all time. Now, before anyone bleats that I'm saying NES, that's just the way it is. You say NES, I say NES. If you don't like it, screw you. Just call me Dracula Duck, because I don't give a <laughs> Anyway, before I rudely interrupted myself, and to comply with Nintendo's censorship policies, <clears throat> for me, this is one of the best platformers on the NES. The boys at Capcom delivered the goods. In fact, it's probably one of the best 8-bit games I think I've personally ever played. I don't care what anybody says, I grew up knowing this as Grizel, so I refuse to accept the name Contra. I'm just not having it. What I do like though, is that this is set in 1987, instead of 2633. We all know the 80s were the best. So if you love your punishment and you're up for a good challenge, you'll be hard pushed to find anything better than Contra. Whoa, I meant Grizel. In fact, some say it's better than the arcade original. And on that bombshell, don't hate me but better than Renegade, better than Target Renegade, better than Double Dragon, and on par with Final Fight. So heaps of praise, but credit where credit's due. And if you've not played this, you haven't lived. And in the words of Nintendo Power Magazine, September 1989, 
It's the roughest, it's the toughest, put up your dukes, street brawl ever, River City Ransom. And get this, it's two player, and it kicks ass. Bottoms up, if you know, you know. I had this on the Amstrad CPC. It played like a massive, badly curled poo. In the arcade, Bionic Commando is an absolute classy. And on the NES, it's essential. Yes, it's trial and error, but it's also highly rewarding. I loved it back in the day, and I love it even more now. You see, I love it that much, I've come over all Kevin Keegan there. Or maybe that's the wine. I'd like to know what other people think of this game. Is it just me, or is this one of the best games ever? Come on, don't be shy, or a little bit cheeky. My God, this game is difficult. But if you love your frustration, if you love your punishment, and still have the agility of a hare, hallelujah, this is the game you've always longed for. I mean, there's four freaking endings, for Christ's sake. If you never owned an NES back in the day, and you've never heard of Castlevania, yes, you might be something that rhymes with lost soul, but there's still time. And I also think these are probably some of the best graphics I've ever seen on the NES. Ah, uh, look, we've reached that stage where I've turned all pathetic, I'm browbeaten by myself, I can't make my mind up, I find it really difficult to do these top tens because I know how judgmental you all are. So please, please, please remember, this is just my personal, humble opinion. No death threats, please. So these are the ones that ever so slightly got away.
Here it is, number one. The best NES game of all time, without question. In fact, we've got a new puppy, and we've called it Luigi. We love the Mario series that much. <clears throat> of course, uh, the name was a family decision. Who am I kidding? We're obsessed. In fact, I looked the other day on the Nintendo Switch, and we put 348 days into Super Mario Galaxy. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, bye!